what's going on you guys i hope you all are having a good day and or a good night today i'm going to be doing a beat breakdown of a beat that i recently uploaded on youtube called saturday love times two and it's on my soundcloud too if you want to check it out but in this video i'm going to be showing you basically how i came up with the beat starting from the sample moving on to the instruments and then yada 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 song structure and all that good stuff so to get started, I started off with the sample or the song called Saturday Love. I found it on YouTube and I found the original version of it and I found an acapella, uh, not an acapella, uh, instrumental version of it because I wanted to use chops from both. So I'm going to go ahead and play you the original version first so you can get an idea what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and play you the instrumental version of it now that I used. Okay, so when I chopped those up into sections, I dragged it out into the playlist. Well, before then, I should, forgot to say this, I tapped out the BPM of the sample, which is 115. So that way, when I place it in the playlist, it would equal out to four bars. And just to make sure, let me go ahead and clear the sample. What I did was, uh, what you can do is click on the sample, right click on the time stretching or the time knob, and then click on how many ever bars you want. So that's essentially what I did. I didn't change the pitch of it or anything. So once I had that, I proceeded to add effects onto it and I started off with the original chop. Yeah, started off with the original and added some effects to it. As you can see here, I added a phaser to it and a low pass filter on it and then EQ'd out the high end. So that way, whenever I add on my 808 or whatever type of bass I'm going to use on top of it, it wouldn't clash with the bass that's already in the sample. So I'm going to go ahead and play you the intro of the track, and then we're going to go from there. And at this point, as I was making the beat, I knew I wanted to switch over to the instrumental chop, but I needed some kind of transition into it. So as you heard, I have a cymbal rise that just goes up and then yada yada. But then I added an 808 slide, which was unique because I rarely do 808 slides as transitions. So I'm going to show you what the, sound, what the slide looks like or sounds like. And I figured that added a nice texture going into the quote unquote drop, which would be the verse. So I'm going to go ahead and play you the intro with the 808 and then I'm going to play the verse as a whole and then go back to it showing you how I came about with the sounds and everything. you can hear it probably sounds kind of hectic and that was a, that's what I was going for I wanted it to be smooth yet have a certain upbeat tempo to it so of course you have the sample here so let me go click on turn on these filters again so with this sample which is the instrumental I have the twinkle effect from the low filter fruity love, fruity love filter excuse me the twinkle effect. I didn't tweak any knobs or anything to it. I have that, and I also have a gate. Okay, and then same with this. I EQ'd out some high end, actually. And then some low end, of course. But then on top of that, 
this was v- this section was very bass driven so i wanted to have not necessarily a super crazy 808 pattern but something that would grab your attention so that's what i have here So once I had that, I knew the kicks would make it even punchier. So I added the kicks, if I can find it. But then I also played out some road chords on top of it, just to keep the, the smooth feeling that I wanted to go for. So with the roads, let me make sure I turned it on. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So once I had that, I kn- in my mind, I heard a little bit of a breakdown. And when I, I got the idea because I opened up, if I can show you, this bass here. And I played out some, like a, a little scale run. And once I played it out, oh, I can, that sounds good. But then I wanted to have that contrasting with the sample. So what I did with the original sample was I reversed it. If I can find it. Yeah. So I have the reverse of the original sample playing for two bars, but then I switched it back over to the regular. All on top of that, I have this scale run that you'll hear, and then, uh, of course, the chords and some spiccato strings. So I'm going to play it from the verse into the mini break. From here, well, with the break again, I added the scale run. See it? And I figured having that little mini break would be like it, is, it would catch your ears in some kind of way instead of having it go back or repeat from the, of course, the 808s and the kicks and then have it go on throughout. So I add it back and then it continues on with the rest of the verse and then it goes into the hook. So I'll go ahead and I'll keep playing the, well, let's see. I'll start it from the first verse again and then have it played throughout into the hook. changed up some of the chords as well again to keep everything smooth so coming from the verse into the hook basically the first the chords again or the Rhodes chords again on top of the sample have that going on but then 
have another 808 transition and then have that lead into the preverse with another 808 um, section, but then I added some strings to it. Again, to make everything smooth yet trap-ish, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play it from the hook into the preverse. then at that point I wanted to like catch it get a breather compared to the first verse because the first verse was so I don't want to say heavy but there was a little bit fast paced so transitioning into this it kind of slowed things down especially with the spiccato strings but then it goes back into the verse again which I essentially just copied and pasted it so there's not much of a difference here until we get into the outro <laughs> to mention of the uh, percussion loop that I found I put a if I can find it yeah I put a growth speed on it too and I have that automated that way you that's why you hear that uh, stutter effect in the percussion loop so going on from the verse into the hook everything's the same but then for the outro I have the that bass scale rundown again on top of the percussion loop in the spiccato strings but what I did here was add some gross beat the lovely gross beat and if I can find it yeah all I did was automate a gross beat um, pattern well not pattern but effect on it called the slow triplet which I commonly use I love it so I had that for the outro essentially because it adds a like, I don't even know how to describe it. it. Just It's something different. Something different. So, I'm going to go ahead and play it from the hook into the outro. I love that how that effect changed the sample because it, it sounds like it's in your like it's it's in your ear going back and forth, but it's kind of distant too. <laughs> 